Hello everybody and welcome back. Um, thanks for joining me for this second video where I'm going to finish off the painting of the lemons that I started in the previous one. Um, I hope that you enjoyed that last video and uh, you found it useful um, talking about the underpainting. We're going to move on today to um, finish the painting and the focus is going to be on creating form. Um, that, what I mean by form is creating that sense of three-dimensionality, um, realism, so that you feel like you could reach into the painting and pull the objects out. Um, to do that, you need to have a good understanding of how light falls on the surface of objects um, and uh, how that affects the values and the transition between values. So I will be talking about that in the video. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get a lot from it. If you have any comments, please drop me a line um, and let's get on with the painting. Here's a picture of the finished painting, just to give you an idea of where we're going to head in this video. Um, if you're interested in buying this painting, it is available um, to Patreon members only. Um, so if you're interested in buying it, please get in touch. So this is where we left the painting in the previous video. The painting's been left overnight and although the paint isn't dry, it's tacky, um, which means I can paint over the surface now without dragging layers up from below. So I just want to talk about the palette that I'm going to be using on this second part of the painting. Um, all of the colours are Winsor & Newton artist grade paints, apart from the transparent oxide red, which is Rembrandt. So I'm just mixing up the colours for the background now. I'm going to work in the same method as in the previous painting um, where I start at the background and then I do the surface that the lemons are sat on and then I finish with the lemons. Um, it's easier to start with the background and work over the top afterwards. I'm just mixing up that lighter value for the right hand side of the background which is um, a Naples yellow mixed in with titanium white. As you can see I'm holding the knife up and um, comparing it with the actual still life again. Um, throughout this painting I will be using the medium that I've got mixed up and the medium that I'm using is linseed oil with um, turpentine in a 50-50 mix. That's just going to help the paint to flow a little bit better. It also helps when I'm doing things like this where I'm going to paint on um, and then do a uh, graduation across the background. I'm going to do quite a bit of blending in this uh, part of the painting now and having that extra oil content in the paint just allows you to mix it up easily. So I've speeded this up. I've just um, mixed in some raw umber with that original mix just to darken it um, and that's going to be blended together with the lighter part of the background in a moment. Just darken it even further. I think if you see in the image, the lower part of the background is slightly darker than the top part. So I'll just block these areas in first, then I'll get the fan brush in a moment and start to blend it all in. Again, I'm using that chisel brush. It's really handy when it comes to doing edges like this. Um, when you're painting the background in, um, you, you're often uh, able to tidy up edges and correct the draw and you'll see later on in the video how I do some alterations to the shape of the, the lemons. Um, throughout this video I'm going to be working on edges and I'll work back and forth between the values on either side of the edge. So I'm just blending in the two areas. They're not blending particularly well at the moment and I think um, the paint isn't probably thick enough actually to mix together. In fact you can see it's pulling some of the paint off um, where the two areas of colour meet. So I'll probably have to put a little bit more on there and, um, and then blend it together. Here we go, I just add a bit more paint to it, thickens it up and it will allow me to blend it in now. I do want to try and get this background as near as finished as I can um, before I go and work on the areas that are over the top of it. Um, I think I do go back and touch it up slightly later on but at the moment I'm getting as close to finished as I can. There's just this area on the right of cast shadow, um, again just helping me to define the edge of that lemon. 
I've got to be careful here that I make sure that the um, the tabletop surface where it meets the background is lined up and, and that's what I'm doing there. I'm just putting the ruler on just to make sure that I've got the surface in the correct place. As I said previously, I want that join, that line between the um, tabletop and the background to be very quiet. I want it to be a quite a subtle thing, not to draw the attention. So now, as in the previous video, um, I work from the back to the tabletop to the front, uh, doing the lemons towards the end. And I'm just using this opportunity doing the tabletop to reshape that sliced lemon. I wasn't quite happy with the drawing of it in the, the first instance. And that combined with the fact that I had to keep on replacing the sliced lemon as they kept drying up. Um, I did this painting over a couple of days and the lemon had dried up so that was replaced. Um, so I'm just using that as an opportunity to reshape the, the lemon. Um, and I'll do a bit of blending in a moment. So the way I'd go about painting this complex arrangement of shadows and reflections is to just dab in an approximate value and then move on to a different area and again put an approximate value. When I'm happy with the, uh, the relationship between those values then I'll blend them together. Um, I'm just mixing up a colour now for the reflection of the right hand lemon. Um, at the moment it's very difficult to judge how the accuracy of these colours until I've actually painted the lemons themselves. You've got to bear in mind that the colour on the lemon at the moment is just the block in. I'm going to go in to the lemons in far more detail and the, the color, add more colour to create more form and that will then impact on the colour of the shadows and reflections which I'll then have to work on further. Um, but you have to start somewhere. So by putting these in, it gives me a rough idea. I'll then have to come back to them and rework them. Now, I've just mixed up some crimson alizarin and I'm putting in some cobalt blue there. And I'm going to be creating a violet. In the, um, the shadow areas of the reflected lemon, it appeared to be a slight um, hint of violet in there. So I've uh, dulled that down slightly, um, lowered the chroma by mixing in some of the um, yellow ochre that I'd mixed for the, the reflected lemon. Um, so there's a violet mixed in with that um, yellow ochre and that will just lower the chroma. Again, the chroma being the intensity of the colour. So this colour is going to be for the reflected shadow um, from the where the two lemons meet. As you can see, I'm sort of dithering quite a bit there, um, not putting any paint on. What's actually happening is I'm, I'm trying to look closely at the actual still life to make the right decision. I mean, I do dither quite a bit anyway, but um, that's my excuse for this one. And again, I'm doing the um, tabletop now, a slightly lighter value. Um, and that'll help me to define the edge of that lemon on the right hand side. As I said earlier, I just block in these main sort of areas and I do a lot of blending afterwards, which you'll see. So I'm just adjusting each of these colours as I go along. Um, the, the reflections and shadows in this painting, it's a really complex arrangement and um, it is very difficult to actually see the colours um, straight off so I have to keep on putting these areas of colour on, adjusting, coming back to them, going over them and you'll see that several times in the painting. 
So I just want to take a look at this area in the centre where the two lemons meet and talk about the values and the values of the shadows and the reflections. Um, if we're going to create um, a sense of realism, it's important that we get these relationships right. Um, as you can see, where the two lemons meet, we've got this bit of background area here, um, like an upside down V. And that appears quite light, that value does. But in actual fact, if we were to compare it to a value down here at the tabletop, it's not as light as that. Um, it is important that we get this edge um, of the lemon. That's obviously clearly quite a dark value, a low value. Um, not quite as low as the occluded shadow right underneath the lemon, but it's getting there. It's similar to this, to its reflection down here. So we have to make sure that this is darker than this. But then of course, when we continue this round, this part of the lemon at the bottom is obviously a lot lighter than this occluded shadow. So there's a gradation there that we have to consider. Um, we've got a similar effect going on with this lemon where although the value is quite low here, it's not as low as the, sh the cast shadow on the other lemon. And again, there's a gradation coming around to where there's quite a light value here. And we have to compare that to the value next to it, um, the background. Um, and then, so go back, going back to this area of the tabletop in the middle, there's a gradation of this coming down here. So it's quite light here. A similar value to this lemon in actual fact to the sliced lemon, um, maybe slightly lighter. But then as it comes down here towards this occluded shadow here, it darkens. And again, we've got this lighter value along the bottom edge of this. Um, it took me quite a while, I've obviously finished the painting now, and it took me quite a while to untangle this with all these reflections and shadows. And of course we've got the shadow here from the, the cut lemon that goes all the way across here and overlaps some of the other shadows and reflections. So to get this accurate, it's very much a case of um, observing carefully, really looking and noting the relationship between all of those values. So now I'm just putting in the um, reflected yellow of the lemon. It's um, quite a high chroma, that colour that I'm putting on at the moment. However, it will seem far more muted once I paint the lemon itself. The lemon's going to need loads more work. It's going to be quite high chroma. Well, it's the highest chroma I can get, the yellow. Um, so this will seem uh, quiet in comparison.
Now here I'm concentrating on making sure that the reflection is symmetrical with the actual lemon. So just defining that edge. And I wanted the, the shadow, it cuts across in a straight line. The shadow from the left hand lemon cuts all the way across. So I want to make sure that that line continues and there's no sort of irregularities in it. And that chisel ed edge brush is brilliant for getting in those sharp little corners like that. So now I'm just blending that edge in slightly. I want it quite soft, I don't want it too hard. And I'm using um, a sort of quarter inch sable and synthetic mix brush. Um, when it comes to blending, um, you need to sort of experiment with different brushes. You need a soft brush to do any sort of blending so that it doesn't fetch the paint up from the layers below. Um, and you have to be very, very gentle with it. But it's good to experiment a little bit and just get the feel for what you can and can't do with the brush. You can see I'm putting the paint on and then I stop and check and take a look at the actual still life, um, adjust the paint value slightly. So here I've got that um, warm shadow underneath again. Um, and I work on this several times throughout the whole painting. And as you put more and more onto the painting, you're able to refine areas that you've previously done. Um, I'm I'm somebody I have to work all over the painting I don't sort of stay in one area and get an area finished to a high level I'll work on an area um, make a comparison with what I've already done move on to a different area it's just a process for me of just constantly having to adjust take a look at the still life look at my painting and see how it compares um, and eventually I arrive at something that I'm happy at, happy with uh, but I, it, I never get it first time um, it is just making a mistake, correcting your mistake, moving on to another area and, and comparing. Um, art, there's just so much comparison in art when you're creating drawings or painting. With drawing it's exactly the same. You're, you're having a look at the lines and the angles and the shapes that you've put on um, and correcting them and going back into areas and working over it again. Here again you can see I'm lightening that highlight on the reflected part of the lemon, um, adding the other, the other lemon in and I go over and over and over until I'm finally happy with something. I think knowing that you've made a mistake, knowing that you've got something wrong is, is the key really um, in, in creating something that's accurate. If you can't see the errors, then obviously you can't correct them. So it's a little bit like a musician has to develop their ear. With, a, with an artist, you have to develop your eye. You have to get your eye in tune so you, you can see where things aren't working and things are wrong. Again, I'm going in and adjusting that shadow now. Coming back to training your eye, I think the best way of doing that, obviously, is careful observation. Um, but you can often get bewildered by the amount of detail in an image. So it's often the best thing to do is to squint when you're looking at the still life. And by squinting you, you get rid of all the unnecessary detail and you simplify the image down to its basic um, values, the darks and the lights. And if you can get those darks and lights reasonably accurate, then, then you'll create a, a realistic looking image. Um, you can go in afterwards and do the detail, uh, but it is the values that will make the image realistic and convincing. So after all of that painting of shadows and reflections, we're left with a really messy palette. So I'm just stopping and tidying that up now. Um, it's always worth doing this every now and then because otherwise you'll find that you're hunting around for gaps on the palette to mix the paint in. And before you know it, the color that you're putting on is getting polluted by surrounding colors that are already on there. Um, 
So I'm just mixing up the local colour for the lemons. Um, the local colour being the colour that isn't in direct highlight or direct shadow. Um, it's the colour of the lemon. I'll take some of that local colour and I've darkened it a little bit to create the shadow values. I'll do the same to create a highlight value. And then by blending those um, values together, that's how we create the form of the lemon. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you a bit about creating form and how um, the way the light falls on an object um, affects how we see it. If we want to create realistic looking form in our paintings, we have to think about how light falls on the surface of the object that we're painting. So if you take our lemons, the light source is up in the top left hand side and it's coming in at an angle something like this. Um, and it's striking the lemon most directly where that highlight is there. So the light would be coming down and hitting the surface at approximately a 90 degree angle. That means that a lot of that light is therefore reflected back and we see it as a highlight, see it brightly lit. As the surface of the lemon turns away, like this, obviously the light is coming down at more of an angle and less of it is reflected directly into our eyes so it seems to be darker. To the point where actually not much light is being reflected back and that's how we have the shadow value here. Um, and obviously over the surface of the lemon, that's a gradual curve. So when we're painting this, we have to make sure that our values um, are gradual, that, that transition is gradual. Um, in a painting, if um, there is a sharp transition, such as this, okay, the transition from dark to light suggests a much sharper turn. Um, and you can see, if I look on this sliced part of the lemon, we've got the light coming in here and striking the surface directly there. But then there's a very sharp turn and we're into shadow straight away down here. And this is why edges are so important. By the way you control edges controls how we visualize a form, the surface of a form. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is this area here. You can see that this area here on the right hand side of this lemon is slightly lighter value than this shadow area here. And what's happening there is some of this light's coming down from the same direction, but then it's bouncing back off either the tabletop or the surface or something over on this right hand side. And we get in a reflected light here. Um, just important to note that the reflected light is never ever anything like as bright as the, the local color even or the highlight. Um, it, sometimes people tend to paint that a little bit too bright um, it is brighter than the shadow, obviously, but nothing like this. I'm putting in the um, shadow value first. Um, I'll worry about the reflected light afterwards. So I'm basically just blocking this in again, just like I did on the first pass. So I'll paint all of the shadow value. Um, and then I'll paint um, the half tone value. And then I'll paint the local colour and I'll finish off with the highlight. So I've tried to simplify this lemon down into four basic values. Obviously there are a lot of subtleties in there that will have to come afterwards such as the reflected light. The bit that I'm doing at the moment between the two lemons isn't actually form shadow, that, that's a cast shadow off the left hand lemon. And that's I come back to that quite a bit. That's one of the features of this painting that's going to be quite strong, that contrast between the local colour and that cast shadow. Just tidying that edge up as I did before when I did the background. I was cutting in and reshaping the lemon, doing the same thing again now. I constantly work backwards and forwards over the edges. So this value at the bottom, although it's lighter than the shadow value, it's nowhere near as bright as the local colour. This goes back to that diagram I showed earlier 
thinking about how the values change um, as we move across the surface of the lemon. This is the half tone value I'm putting in now. Just blending it together. Again, all the time I'll be squinting at the actual um, still life. Now you can see this is the really bright, this is the local colour um, and the, the chroma of the local colour, that is the, the intensity of the colour, tends to be a lot higher than the highlight. The highlight has quite a bit of white mixed into it, um, but the chroma of the local colour here is quite bright. And that's almost as, as um, out of the tube um, cadmium lemon and cadmium yellow. Just that edge is quite sharp where that cast shadow is and making sure I keep that nice and sharp and the top edge of the lemon. I've still got to put the um, highlight area in. I will, when I come to do the detail on the surface of the lemon, I add um, quite a bit on the highlight then. Here's that soft brush again, just to soften down that transition. It's got to be sharp, but not so sharp that um, it looks unrealistic. What you find happens with the shadow is they're, they're at the sharpest, the edges, when it's close to the object. The further away it moves from the object that's casting it, the, the gentler it is, the more blurred it is, I should say. So now I've done that work on the lemon and um, added those brighter colours. Um, it's made me reevaluate the shadow area and the reflections. Um, so I'm going back in there now just to darken that shadow underneath the lemon. Um, and it's starting to come together and it become a little bit more convincing. The form of the lemon is a bit more realistic now. Um, and the more I work into it, that, that's what you find happens, that you'll notice something, you, you change it and you improve it and, and gradually things start to come together. So at this point I'm beginning to think about the texture on the surface of the lemon and um, although I'm still adjusting values and um, either raising the value or lowering it, um, there's less blending going on. I'm, I'm aware that the, the lemon is irregular and the little sort of pits and dents in it and I'm suggesting that by um, some of the brush strokes that are going in there and I won't be smoothing those out now.
at this point you can see I'm using a size zero round sable brush and that just allows me to get that really sharp line between the two lemons um, and I do my hand does sometimes shake when I'm doing this so what I tend to do is prop my hand up on a, I've got a walking stick that hangs over the top of the easel As I said, I wanted this edge to um, be quite sharp, um, so I'm focusing on the value change from the surface of that sliced lemon to the, to the side of it, and constantly adjusting. Sometimes you find that um, having a break from the painting, leaving it for sort of 20 minutes and coming back and taking another look, you, you will immediately spot things that need correcting um, or things that aren't working and you can go back in and change them. You get so fixated sometimes when you're actually doing the painting, you, you almost can't see um, the mistakes.
mixing up some black and some transparent oxide red there. Um, these occluded shadows continue to get darker again as I'm comparing them to the painting as it's developing. Now I've got a really small chisel edge brush there to, to get that edge. I'm probably going to drag some of that paint with um, a blending brush in a moment so that it does blend in a little bit to soften it. When you're trying to blend tiny areas like this it's quite difficult. So the tip of that brush is barely touching the surface of the panel. If you um, aren't certain about what the stroke's going to be like before you put it on, it's worth sometimes testing it on a piece of paper beforehand just to get a feel for the kind of the intensity of the, the stroke that you're going to put on. The last thing you want to do is put something on the panel and then regret it. You see that I'm leaning on that mall stick, that walking stick just to make sure my hand stays steady. So now I've got a slightly bigger sable brush and I'm going to drag, that's bone dry that brush is, I'm just going to drag that paint so that it blends together and uh, just have another quick clean up. I'm now mixing up a bit of yellow ochre um, with some of the yellow um, and I'll mix some raw umber in with it just to create the colour for the um, sliced lemon, the sliced part of the lemon and I'll mix various different values of that so that I'm not constantly having to go back I can use them straight off the palette and paint that in one go. using this um, opportunity now um, when I'm painting the, the surface of that sliced lemon I'm going to shape the segments so rather than painting where the, where the sort of rind of the lemon is that goes around the outside the white that band around the outside rather than trying to shape that I'm working from the inside and using the, the darker values to cut into that white to just shape that um, those segments
now I'm just mixing up um, a bit of the lighter value for the tabletop again. Um, I realised that that was a little bit too dark and I wanted to bring that value up slightly. As a consequence of that I've then got to work back into these reflections and shadows as I said earlier I knew I'd be coming back to this um, now I now I've done the bulk of the work on the lemons it's clear to see um, how this needs adjusting just need to tidy that up a little bit As I get towards the end of the painting I'm just going round and tidying things up that are, are standing out to me so redefining edges, um, just adjusting one or two values again um, and then the, the last thing that I'm going to do is go in with a fine brush and put any detail in such as the pitting on the lemon, the highlight on the, um, the side of the right hand lemon and then to create the area um, of the sliced lemon that looks as though the, there's some um, juice on it so it's quite wet so you get some real bright highlights on that
So I'm still um, refining the edges, uh, but now I'm using some of this shadow color to put in a few rough brush marks just to create the skin of the, the lemon, the pitting on the surface. And uh, in a moment, you'll see I'll put the highlight on with just almost pure white, um, tidying this edge up, making it quite sharp. And this is just a finishing off part of the painting now. Just adding the little uh, final highlights on the skin of the lemon um, so just little tiny dabs of paint with the tip of the brush just to suggest that reflected light coming off there um, I always feel at this point that I'm finally finally arrived everything that's gone before has kind of been a setup for this um, so I haven't used pure white anywhere else in the painting it's always been mixed with something else because I've known all along that I'm going to be saving that pure white just for these highlights um, just where the light glints off the surface of the lemon particularly the areas where there's the juice on the, the sliced lemon um, and that's always the case when you're painting anything with a reflected light in you, you save the pure white just for the very very end it's always quite satisfying this part of the painting is though I don't know if you can pick this up on the video but um, the paint on the end of that brush is on really thick um, and it comes to a little point and I'm using that to drag the paint over the surface um, so that it's laid on the surface quite thickly so that uh, I don't want any transparency in this paint at all and I don't want it to mix with the layers below um, I want it quite in pasto um, to create those highlights I'm just going in now with a very very fine brush and just putting those little pits in to suggest the surface of the lemon oh, at this stage of the painting you could spend as much or as little time as you want adding the details um, the important thing are the values that you get in at the start if you can get that right then the painting will be convincing regardless of this this detail stage um, it's all down to a matter of personal taste now, I think, with the, the details. 
So the painting's essentially finished now. I'm just fiddling around with things, um, just softening edges and things like that. But um, that is basically the finished painting. Um, I hope you found this video useful. Um, I hope that you can apply some of the things that I've covered in this in your own paintings. Um, and I look forward to bringing out the next one in a month's time. Um, this painting of the lemons is available to Patreon members only. If you're interested in buying it, um, get in touch with me. Um, so thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.